How are you? Um, okay, well, oh, do you, sorry, I don't hear you. I asked you if you can classify your relationship with his as a like, you know, like, type of relationship. And he didn't really say yes. What? What would you, <laughs> what would you classify as? Um, yeah, if, Ma if Magneto and Xavier had a baby. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I would say, in fact. Um, yeah, we're two, we're on the same side of the political spectrum, but we have different beliefs, a different vantage point. Um, we one of us is very passive. I'm not going to say which one. <laughs> and one of our characters uh, is very active and, and and demands action in a time of such struggle and such like inequality. And I think that's really important. Um, I think Lorna's core values is very important for people, especially young people in this day and age, to have and take on. That like, if we all take one step together, if we all take one action, it is worth so much more than our individual, our individual selves. Um, so vote. <laughs> um, could you touch on your relationship with Andy this season? Because we started seeing it like kind of grow, maybe not taking over Lorna as a big sister, but how how this kind of grow as we, the episodes go on. Yeah, I mean, when you're put in a place where you don't trust a single soul in there and the one person you know from your life before, Andy and Polaris never had a scene together in season one. They were never, I don't think they were ever shown bonding or doing anything that was like brother and sister like. Um, and then all of a sudden, out of sheer force, out of circum for circumstantial reasons, they are forced to be each other's best friend, their confidant, their you know mentor, mentee. Uh, every, they're everything to each other because they, every day, go to sleep a little bit scared for their lives. And that's the kind of place the inner circle is. They know they're doing good work and they know they're there for a good reason, but they need each other to be there or else they couldn't survive. And I, I love the bond they have. One of, sorry, one of the things we saw in season one is the fact that motherhood really made her start to embrace her father's destiny. Like but it still seems like, at least in season two, there's still some good, and obviously the Hellfire Club is fighting is it a little difficult to play off that? Or? To play off what? I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, this protective nature, do you feel yes. it comes just from being a mother? Oh, or? gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Polaris, I, I say this and I just have to say it out. I just have to say bluntly what it is. Polaris is turning into Becky. Um, like, directly. Uh, her, we've never seen her as a mother before. And, uh, the comics, and now that she's a mother in our show, it's very much Magneto's like, original lore, his, his journey in the films, even. Um, yeah, she has to sacrifice so much for her child, and maybe through that she can learn to forgive her father. Um, there's an entire episode dedicated to her father, what happened to her birth father, her birth father, quote unquote, and um, sort of her journey with her past. Um, later on, it's episode eight. I don't know if you want to say that, but whatever. Um, and I think it's really interesting, and we definitely delve into the Magneto thing. Also, there is a point in this season where Polaris finally accepts her legacy. She is X-Men mutant royalty, and there is a point this year where she finally says, forget it, I guess I am, I guess I have to do this thing. When she never wanted to be a leader and never wanted to be anything but just herself. So, I hope that answered the question. Thank you guys.